Picture this, guys. It's 1987. We're in Quebec, Canada. A couple of engineering students decide to start a bicycle company. They call it Da Vinci, as in Leonardo Da Vinci. A few years later in 1990, they meet a friend, Felix, who's like a road bike entrepreneur, end up changing the name to Da Vinci with an E, and the rest is history. I mean, this company is really cool. I've seen some of their, their videos online. It shows their, their headquarters over in Quebec and they they source aluminum there they do their own testing their own designing and building this particular bike was assembled there and they're moving more and more of their operations domestically to canada but of course to hit hit scale and volume and a lot of the parts on really any bike are still going to be sourced in part overseas in i think 2016 they do their first electric bike it's called the e cartier what we're looking at here today is the E Milano. So they, they like to name their bikes after cities, Milan, Italy, really beautiful place. And this bike in particular is cool because it's using the Shimano battery pack and motor system. This is the E5000, very lightweight, efficient, quiet. And this thing has a standard Q factor, 68 millimeters. So it's more like a traditional bicycle. You can even see quick release on the rear and on the front. So performing wheel maintenance, maybe swapping out a tire tube. It's just a lot easier. The bike is very, very lightweight. It's like 47 and a half pounds. The battery pack is only 5.7 pounds and about five and a half pounds for the motor. So to me, this is a really exciting bike because it's, it's more like a regular bicycle. And I'm here just in a neighborhood, but it does have hills. I'm gonna do some tests. And this is where I would imagine people riding this thing. That said, it's still very, very capable if you wanna set it up for maybe some of those rainy days. You can see we've got fender bosses right there and there, even up front, look at this. We've got the welded on bosses on the lowers of the suspension fork. So you can connect a fender that's gonna feel really solid. You don't have to use those plastic cuffs or the ones that kind of stuff up into the, the base of that steering tube. And I really appreciate that as someone who it lives in sort of a rainy place. We're near Vancouver, Canada right now and you know, rain Coover. So I love that you can add fenders very easily to this. You can also add a rear rack. Got the mounting points set up for that. Maybe you mount a child seat or some panniers or something like that. This thing is very versatile. It only comes in a mid-step frame, but the way they've set this up with the double tube, it's a very sturdy mid-step. It's not like some of those wave frames that end up being heavier because they have to use extra material to reinforce and get that stiffness. So you end up with lightweight, but still fairly stiff with a medium standover height versus super low or kind of the traditional diamond, very high standover height. Before I go too much further, I want to mention that these are only being sold in Canada right now. Da Vinci seems like a, a pretty large and, and well-established, respected brand, but they are fairly Canadian-focused. Uh, so I want to get that out of the way if you're someone who lives in a, another part of the world. Being in Canada myself, I thought this was really cool, and it's just neat to see a high-quality product that resembles some of the big three type of companies, Trek, Giant, Specialized, where you have five frame sizes and, and just a fit and finish that is really high quality. So I'm gonna continue forward now and talk about some of the, the bicycle components. I'm someone who really cares about comfort. So I was excited to see this SR Sun Tour suspension fork. It's not super high end, it's a spring suspension fork so that adds a little bit of weight and there's not a ton of adjustability. We just have these preload clickers. You wanna tighten them in unison and preload the spring if you weigh a little bit more. I'm a fairly lightweight rider myself. I weigh like 135 pounds, I'm 5'9", and I'm on the medium size frame here. So for me, this is, this is set up just fine and I actually dialed down the preload so that I could get that nice travel we were talking about. 63 millimeters, these are 28 millimeter stanchions, steel, kind of standard. The black looks really nice. It's not frame match, but with the black accents and their logo and everything, I think it still does look nice. If you're someone who is riding pretty regularly and maybe you have some back and neck sensitivity, I'm always calling out suspension seat posts as a nice option. Seems like people ride for longer distances and maybe at relatively a little bit higher speeds when they're on electric bikes. So this is 30.9 millimeters. You could swap that out with like an SR Sun Tour or maybe a Connect like Body Float. Lots of options these days. And seeing a little bit of a, a wider seat tube and seat post means you just have some more options. Fairly nice saddle here, but it is very active. This is actually Velo, even though it's co-branded here for Da Vinci. And you can just 
just see this is it's almost a little bit more road inspired that narrow nose right here you're not going to like chafe your thighs if you're actively pedaling this bike and because the motor is a little bit more minimalist this is meant to be actively pedaled eight speed drivetrain which we'll get to in a minute and the wheel size here so these are 700 by 50 C and, and that's, that's a nice size. So 700, that's kind of the 28, 29, a little bit taller, gives you a lower attack angle. And then 50 C, it's wider than a road bike. And we've got this hybrid tread here that gives you a little bit of traction if you go onto a cobblestone road or maybe a gravel trail. So I think this is really good. And there's still clearance for fenders. So I, I love that. I think they made a really good choice. The tire pressure rating on these is 50 to 80 PSI. So you can take it down a little bit if you're a lightweight guy like me. And and you can get a little bit of comfort from the, the lower volume, but you will sacrifice some range when you do that. One trade-off with these tires is that they don't have reflective sidewalls and they do not appear to have a puncture protection. So they're just kind of standard. The bike does not come with lights, but considering that you've got that reflective kind of shiny silver frame color, it feels like you'd still be kind of safe and you could just get a helmet with lights or just some aftermarket lights. I already mentioned quick release, 100 millimeter hub spacing up front, 135 in the rear, very standard. So that's sort of the width of the hubs themselves. And we've also got a quick release clamp here for the seat. If you are someone who rides in the city, you might want to swap these out with like locking hardware, but they are very convenient if you're just someone cruising around the neighborhood. It was interesting to see 175 millimeter length crank arms. And these are Shimano specific. They interface with the Shimano Steps E5000 motor. Square tapered a spindle, which is just kind of, eh, kind of normal. The pedals, not my favorite actually. You see how they're not super wide. Um, you're not gonna get quite as much traction. If it's a snowy day, the snow's just gonna push right through because of this just sharp metal surround. But this is steel and you can see that it's already starting to like rust just a little bit. So this is a demo bike and it doesn't have a kickstand. And I, I guess maybe the bike doesn't ship with a kickstand, which is a little bit of a bummer. I think this is a 40 millimeter spacing so you can mount one aftermarket and it's tucked in. So hopefully you're not gonna kick it. It's in the right place but I was sort of disappointed that it doesn't come with a kickstand. So back to the 175 millimeter crank arms, it's a little bit longer than average. 170 is what I usually see, but with the taller wheels and maybe the multiple frame sizes, uh, perhaps they have different crank arm lengths depending on the frame that you get. And then again, the pedals, fairly easy and, and cheap to swap out and upgrade if you wanna do that at some point. We got the shield on the motor and then another plastic shield below just to protect it. A little bit of dust and stuff getting in there, but for the most part, it's a fairly clean design. And I, I appreciate that the electric bike components are fairly low and centered on the frame. So you get good balance and better handling, low center of gravity. You can also see that the locking core for the battery is fairly high. It is on the left-hand side of the bike, which is sort of the side you lay down uh, versus the drivetrain. And again, no kickstand. Uh, but also the charging port for the battery. It's, it's just above the pedals, the crank arms. So they're both high enough that you're not, you know, kind of getting snagged or potentially getting bumped by those crank arms. And this is mainly a Shimano uh, consideration. Uh, it's not a decision that Da Vinci made, but I still appreciate that the battery is so accessible and I'll show how it comes off later. It's pretty good. I also appreciate that they're doing some internal routing with their cables right here. You can see through that down tube. And then they protrude and they mounted them on top of the stays. So you can see the brake line, hydraulic brake line over here, and then the shifter cable on that side, which is interesting. It almost doubles as a slap guard, just keeping that chain from uh, touching the paint. They do only have one color. It's like this platinum, silver, glossy. Over here, we can see a magnet and a little reed sensor. The motor is measuring pedal cadence, pedal torque, and rear wheel speed to be very dynamic. So it's gonna give you uh, motor output relative to your pedal input, 40 Newton meters of torque. It's rated at 250 watts nominal, fairly standard. Shimano is a very traditional bicycle company. They don't make speed pedelec motors. They tend to be light, efficient. It's kind of the Japanese, um, you know, efficient, reliable, that kind of stuff. And I like how quiet this one is. 40 Newton meters of torque may not sound like a lot, but I find that when you're riding a relatively lightweight bike, again, with everything on the bike here, no kickstand, this is 47 and a half pounds. That's, that's light by e-bike standards. It is gonna start to go up if you add the fenders and racks and stuff yourself. And I wanna call out, I thought this was really neat. They have three bolts here on the top tube for mounting maybe a bottle cage 
You could slide it up or down, or maybe a folding lock or some other accessory, or you can leave it off, and these are the nice kind of rounded tops so they won't snag quite as much if you're standing over this with pants or a dress or something like that. Another thing I appreciate, it's attention to detail here, is this plastic guard on the steel chain ring. And even though there's no guide and there's no chain cover, it's gonna help protect your pants or dress. It's not gonna touch the greasy chain or get snagged or caught up in that. So great job. This is the wire on the other side that I was saying kind of acts as a, a slap guard. With that 38 tooth steel chain ring, this chain isn't getting too close to the chain stay. I don't think it'd be a, a huge issue. And then we can see the Shimano Acera derailleur with the eight speed cassette. This is 11 to 34 tooth, decent spread. And you can see that 34 tooth extra big. That's gonna help you get started or climb, which is again, excellent given that this is more of an efficient motor versus like a super powerful type of thing. And on our way up to the handlebar, see another internally routed cable here. And that's for the display, which is pretty cool. Looking at the handlebar, there's a little bit of rise and back sweep. It's, it's fairly straight. It's a little bit more uh, high performance, kind of like the saddle, even though I would consider this sort of a hybrid uh, bike. I noticed the grips were, they're like foam, but they have this bulge in the middle. They're like semi-ergonomic and they are locking, so not gonna twist on you. You can see that this bike's been laid down a couple times and that plastic cap gets a little bit scuffed up, but well, you know, we're doing pretty well. 17 degree rise, 70 millimeter stem, so it's not super long and it's also not flat. It's a little bit up and that's part of what gives you that upright, more comfort oriented geometry. Got a few spacers in here, two fives, one ten. And now let's talk about the shifter. So relating back to the drivetrain, eight speeds. You can see that optical window right there. We've got a low shifter and that's gonna get you those lower gears. You can shift three gears at a time with that. And then the high lever, it's, it's only a one direction and you have to use your pointer finger. So I complain about this sometimes where, you know, I, I'd like to use my thumbs to shift gears and my fingers to brake. But in this case, you have to take a finger off in order to shift. You, you can't push that, it only goes in this direction. So a little bit of a complaint, not a huge issue. And I wasn't sure what these things were, but I just figured it out. They're for the little wire coming from the display and they're even branded Da Vinci. That is cool, a lot of attention to detail. And we don't wanna forget about the brakes while we're up here. So we've got Tektro hydraulic disc brakes, which is great because it means you're gonna get a fairly consistent uh, action between the right or the left. And the right brake lever, you know, it's actuating this rear brake. It has a longer distance to travel. With mechanical brakes, sometimes the right lever requires more hand effort. And if you are a petite rider or just someone who's maybe you're cold or you have smaller hands, it's so nice that you can adjust the reach on these, bring them in a little bit, and that you don't have to pull super hard. So hydraulic disc brakes, great job. 160 millimeter rotors on both sides. Again, Tektro, dual piston calipers, very standard. I've got my keys, and these are Abus keys, which I'm a fan of, but they're the, they're the cheaper ones from Abus. They're called Amparo. They don't let you key these to match any locks or anything. It's just basically for the bike. So we just insert the key, twist like that. The battery starts to tip out to the side. Very easy. I mean, I love this thing. 5.7 pounds. It doesn't have a perfect handle, but it's fairly easy to hold on to with one hand. There's the frame and the interface is really nice. We'll come over here and check out the charger. Very lightweight and compact. 1.5 pounds on this thing. We got a wall side that's removable and that's probably to handle different geographies. And then we've got this small plug, which you'll notice on the battery pack, there's a little plug door on the side. So you can charge this battery on or off the bike. You do not need like an adapter block dongle thing like we've seen in the past from Shimano and some other brands. So I love this thing. I feel like it's a it's a great setup. The charger is rated at 1.8, which is a little less. Most basic chargers are two amps. So, you know, 1.8 versus two, it's not a huge deal. It's gonna be a little bit slower, but that's not the end of the world because this battery is sort of a lower capacity pack, 418 watt hours. I would say an average battery these days is like 500 watt hours, but you're saving weight, you're saving cost. And with that efficient motor, I feel like this still does well. You know, you see that range estimate up to 90 miles. Maybe you could expect something more like 50, but that's still really good for a bike like this that's so light. 36 volts, 11.6 amp hours. There we go. So let's go ahead and pop this thing back on the bike. Very easy. Just need to line up the base right there. There's kind of this 
Just set it there and then really delicately just slide it in. Listen for the click. Love it. It's just so satisfying. And by having it be a side entry battery versus top down, you're able to have this really low top tube and just make these frames that are tight and clean. I, I like this. Great job. No, it's not fully hidden internally mounted like some of the, the fancier newer batteries, but those tend to weigh more and definitely cost more. The price point on this bike is 2,700 US, 3,400 Canadian. And I'm trying to give you both prices, but really since it's sold in Canada, $3,400. Getting into this next step, one thing I realized was, well, you know, there's there's no power button on the display. Like, I pressed all the buttons, nothing was happening, and then I realized, oh, I actually have to physically press the battery pack itself. So when you press right here, you can see these green lights, and then the display comes to life here. This thing swivels, it's non-removable, there are no, like, USB ports or anything on it. It's very minimalist, and it's like the E5000 specific display. Usually Shimano has these advanced like menus you can get into and there's beeping and there's there's a lot more This one's kind of a minimalist thing and I actually kind of like it. It's fairly reachable. It's fairly readable It's it's not super big. I mean, it's just grayscale, but it is backlit And we've only got a few readouts here So we've got a battery charge level infographic with five dots each dot represents like 20%. So you can imagine being all the way down to that last dot and wondering, am I at 20% or am I at 0%? The good news is if you do run out of the battery, the bike's so efficient that it is fun to pedal even without assist. We've got speed here. It's set for kilometers per hour right now. And then in the right corner, we've got range, distance, odometer. And if we press this circle right here, it's going to cycle through these. So our odometer says 76. Our range says nothing because we aren't in any assist right now. We're just regular bicycle to get to levels of assist just press the up or down arrows so there's the first level it says 150 kilometers of range it's like 90 miles 100 or 105 that's the the medium level and then 75 so I'm, I'm estimating like 30 to 90 miles worth of range depending on charge level tire pressure your weight how much you pedal how actively you pedal but since this is a multi-sensor that incorporates pedal torque you do have to pedal actively to get this thing to to initiate it's a more active electric bike and, and i'm okay with that i think it's, it's set up really well for what it is if we press the circle button again it gets distance and i already cleared it i was trying to figure this out if you want to clear this yourself you hold the circle again until this flashes press it once more and it would clear it so those are the different menus that's that's really it there is a, a lights button right here that you can press but we don't have any lights wired into this bike so it's really it kind of goes unused in this particular case and that's about it so ready to do a little ride test i like to do these in the highest level of assist so you can get an idea of how the motor sounds at full power and again i want to highlight one of the benefits of having 160 millimeter disc brake rotors they're a little bit smaller so if you do come into one of those bike racks that has like metal poles you're less likely to bump the pole and, and bend the disc brake rotor which can end up kind of resulting in this like whooshing sound as you pedal so that's it's working out pretty well here i think for this city setup go ahead and just pedal away I know there are cars driving by and um, really between them and just a little breeze, I can I can't really can't even hear the motor. There we go, I heard it a little bit more that time as I start to pick up the cadence and, and get that motor going. I do not know the maximum RPM for this motor, meaning like, how quickly can the motor keep up with your pedaling? Most motors these days are at least 100 RPM. Some of them are 120. So I'm gonna try to pedal really fast this time and see if, if the motor is still helping me. Yeah, yeah, it felt like I was getting a little bit of help even at that faster pedal rate. And now here we're coming towards a hill. I'm not gonna switch gears. I'm just gonna try to climb up this thing. I am in the highest level of assist. We'll see how it goes. Again, I'm like in the second gear right now. I'm seated, feeling pretty comfortable. 
The saddle should really be higher for me, so I'm getting full leg extension, but I'm not feeling strain. It's very satisfying. And the motor picks up very quickly when you, when you exert yourself and you have a little bit of torque going into the sensor, it just picks right up, even from standstill. Let's do some gear shifting. Yeah, you know, Shimano all around, Japanese company. Like I was saying, if you think about Toyota or something, fairly reliable, kind of conservative, and um, yeah, just efficient. This is a class one electric bike, meaning you get up to 20 miles per hour, 32 kilometers per hour. It's allowable on the highest number of trails and paths and stuff. And you can see this thing just blends in. It's not too aggressive or anything. Perfect bike for cruising around a beautiful neighborhood like this. Now that we're fairly high up on this hilly neighborhood, I wanna mention that this bike can definitely go faster than that 20 mile per hour, 32 kilometer top speed. Just the way it's set up, it's very efficient. The gearing can support, you know, much higher than that. Uh, and the motor's not gonna hold you back. There's no drag or anything like that. It free wheels efficiently. And um, I think that's another reason why, to me, this is more like a bicycle with just a little bit of electric assist kind of tacked on. And it's very handy when you're climbing and then when it's time to go down, I, I'm gonna be just flying down this, having a blast. doing another little ride up the hill and almost did a little wheelie. You, re you really feel a nice amount of torque from the motor because you're leveraging the drivetrain here. In the lowest gear, it feels like you have plenty of torque. When you switch up to the high gears, you're gonna be working a little bit more. But again, active bike, active saddle, handlebars, efficient tires, that's just the way it's set up. And the brakes also worked well. I did a little stop test here and uh, no problem. I was I was skidding before I was losing any kind of traction or slowdown with the brakes themselves. Okay, guys, from here you can see the drivetrain, 38 tooth steel chainring, 11 to 34 in the rear. I'm going to start out pedaling with no assist, and then I'm going to take it all the way up to the highest level of assist, just so you can hear the noise and also get a sense for you know this bike is easy to pedal just as a regular bicycle, and that's kind of a nice feeling after you get off some of the really heavy bikes these days. you believe it? That's with the highest level of assist. And I think part of the reason it's so quiet is because I'm in a higher gear. Now I'm going to take it down to the lowest gear. I'm going to do the high RPM pedaling. There's even a little hill here, so we're going to get a little bit more noise now. I just went off a curb, kind of bumped the camera a little bit. It's so quiet, you know, and that's because there's really no accessories here that are gonna be rattling around. The chain is tight, the Acera drivetrain, you know, you got Shimano, Turney, Altus, Acera, Alivio, Dior. So this is, you know, kind of the third one up from the base. It's fairly tight, fairly light. It's got a little barrel adjuster so you can fine tune this without using any tools as you get cable uh, bedding in over time. It's, it's really nice. 
Well, guys, I think that's it. I had a lot of fun learning about this company, Da Vinci, just kind of studying the history. I can see why they've lasted since 1987, and it's cool that they're they're growing. I like their approach to electric bikes. I feel like this is a good implementation of the E5000. So that is the Da Vinci E Milano. For the full written review, check out electricbikereview.com. I measure all the specs and everything by hand. I have some more photos. There's also a cool comparison tool. You could look at some other bikes in this price range do some pros and cons for yourself, decide which drive system you like best, and ask some questions, make some friends in the forums. <laughs> I love you guys, had a lot of fun out here, but I am climbing some hills. You still get a little bit of a workout on these things, even in the highest level of assist, especially when you're climbing. I hope you have fun out there, and we'll see you on the next one.